Hi everybody, this is Kathy Gross, Kirkwood Bookkeeping Clean and Simple here in Austell, Georgia near Metro Atlanta. And today is a third video in my series on my cleanup approach. And today we are going to be talking about the importance of running the reports for all dates by year. So that way you can see pretty much at a glance some of the issues that you may see when you're looking at these reports. And basically this step is kind of a checks and balances for the two previous steps that we did. The first step, remember we ran the chart of accounts and clicked on each individual line item. And we also ran the reports for all dates for each line item. And then after that, we actually went through and looked at the organization of the chart of accounts and noticed some of those balances may have been incorrect and things like that. So this third step is basically just going back and making sure we didn't overlook anything. So we are in Craig's Design and Landscaping Services sample file. And what I want to do is I want to go over here to the Reports tab. And I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop. We are in Chrome Incognito, which is what you want to be using when you're working with a client file of any kind. So I dragged and dropped that tab next to the dashboard tab that we were looking at and what you want to do I'm going to start with the balance sheet first so I'm going to click on this three button ellipse thing here that is going to allow us to customize the report so when we do that the customization window will open up again we want to go ahead and run this for all dates and we want to segment our columns by years now if your QuickBooks file that you're working with goes back several years you may want to segment that in maybe four to five yearly periods at a time and do it that way and over here you want to make sure that you change from active rows or columns or non-zero to all because you want to see all columns including those with nothing in them so once you do that you'll be able to see a lot of information here now, before I look at this, I'm going to do the same thing with the profit and loss. I'm going to drag and drop again. And we're going to do that same process, but this time doing it with the profit and loss. So we're going to go ahead and click on this three ellipse button or three button ellipse. Customize. Run it for all dates and segment by years and like I said if you have several years that go back you may want to do it in like three to five year segments we're going to go ahead and show all rows and all columns and we're going to run that report and here you go so I'm going to click back over here on the tab for the balance sheet and again what we want to look for is anything that looks abnormal and any of these that have zero balances in them, we want to click through and just double check and make sure that those things, if they have anything in them at all that may have been organized incorrectly or whatever. So you just want to make notes of some of those things. So, um, and in this case, we do have some invoices and payments in here. So this category will probably be used at some point. So we don't want to get rid of it. And that's something we'll want to make a note of. But the other thing you want to make sure that you notice is that down here in opening balance equity, remember we have that negative balance. So we can go ahead and click through on this total here to bring us to the transaction report for that. And it looks like that somebody did some inventory quantity adjustments, maybe inappropriately or forgot to zero out the amounts. And so it threw the ensuing balance into the opening balance equity account. And so that would be something that would need to be fixed. So let's go back to the report summary. And I went right by it, but remember when we talked about the undeposited funds last time, we clicked through on here and there wasn't really a whole lot you could see, just a bunch of in and outs and in and outs and stuff like that. But basically when we go to diagnose that, we go to back to the bank deposits again and as you can see when we get there that these two payments that are in transit to be deposited those are fairly recent which makes up that 206252 
So that looks like it's okay there. So we'll go back to the report summary. But basically, again, we're not fixing anything at this point. We're just diagnosing. So let's go ahead and do that with the profit and loss as well. And you're looking for any abnormal balances. And of course, under the income area, you'll see a negative number here, but that's normal for discounts given. So you want to go through and anything that looks odd and any of these that have zeros, you want to look at those because chances are these may end up being unneeded accounts that you may end up needing to inactivate or maybe merge with something else. Anything that's in a parent category, such as legal and professional fees, those will probably be needing to be moved to the appropriate subcategory because you never really want to use a parent category to categorize something. And then the other thing you want to look at as well is down here in the bottom where it says miscellaneous or if you have anything in uncategorized income or in uncategorized expense, you want to look at those as well. So we're going to click on that and when you do that, you'll see that these are amounts are tied to bills that maybe have some things mapped incorrectly in the products and services list to the chart of accounts and that's something else that will need to be fixed and by the way that's what we're going to be talking about next time diagnosing those issues in the products and services list so hopefully this will help you today and so I hope y'all have a great week y'all take care everybody thank you for watching I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and share it with others my goal is to publish at least one new video per week on QuickBooks desktop or online topics, the occasional motivational video, and a few surprises thrown in here and there. I would love to talk to you about how to help you optimize your knowledge and usage of QuickBooks desktop or online. My Calendly link is in the slide. Please use that to reach out to me to schedule a free 45-minute initial consult. I would love to talk to you about your QuickBooks desktop or online training needs. Again, have a wonderful day, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.